I, I remember Bruce Hill telling me that once Mark Franz made something up at Stars, and Bruce loved it, and he was coming in for dinner, and he wanted to have it, and they were offended because they didn't want to do something that they had done before. And, you know, we don't think that way all the time anymore. I think the thing is, if something is good, you do want it to come back, and you do want it to become part of somebody else's food of memory. Let them remember it, because that's the food that you crave. That's why we have Thanksgiving, and Hanukkah, and all these things where there are certain iconic dishes that get prepared, maybe just once a year, but people look forward to them because it's a touchstone. And I think that has power, and it has a story that just links people with their food in a very different way than food that's just sort of flashy, and I'm making it up, and I'm having a good time, and now I couldn't do it again tomorrow because I don't remember really what I did. That's another kind of cooking, and it's sort of razzle-dazzle, and... Um, I don't know. I don't think it has the staying power. Well, do you think that that's, as you put it, dude food, you know? Guys well, food? a lot of it is dude food. I mean, we're having, I don't know how many of you have been following this whole thing with Time magazine and uh, the, the gods of food who all happen to be men and no women chefs. And I write about boy food and girl food in this book because it is an issue. And I think the thing is that there are many men who cook what I call girl food. I mean, you go to Delphina, they're cooking traditional food. Craig likes to tease me that he cooks like a girl, and Lawrence likes to tease me at Nopa that he cooks like a girl. But they're cooking traditional food based on, you know, cultural traditions of other countries or American food, but recognizable food. They're not deconstructing. They're not taking spaghetti carbonara and putting a stick of bacon and a wing of noodles and an egg yolk and a shard of parmesan and calling it carbonara. It's something, but it's not that. They don't feel the need to, to break up clam chowder the way Jose Andres does, you know, where it's a potato foam and a frozen clam and whatever. I, I, I think it's, it's fun. It's fun if you want to do it, but I think I'd rather eat clam chowder or carbonara. However, um, you don't want to stop people from experimenting or trying new things. You don't want to be the old, I'm the old fart, so you don't want to be the old fart that says, why are you doing that, you know, because it's got to taste good. The bottom line is, does it taste good, or is it just interesting? Interesting is fine. You know how when you had something that you didn't like and people ask you how it was in their restaurant, and you say it was interesting? It was interesting. Mm -hmm. But was it delicious? And I think that... Um, Women also don't get the amount of press that the men do because they are the ones that ha need greater control of their time. They have family obligations. They work all day long. They don't go out cavorting with the boys, visiting other chefs and getting drunk at night because they're going to go home. And they don't feel the need to open 25 restaurants and piss on every hydrant in town. They... <laughs> Stay in their place of business. They work. They know their customers. Um, it's, a different, it's a different mindset. And um, so the fact that all these women were ignored by the idiot who edited the magazine um, caused a great groundswell, actually, sort of wonderful one. Because when I started thinking about goddesses of food and women of food, I think, all the good editors at the cookbooks places have been women. The food editors at newspapers have been women. The people teaching, very often, are women. There are women now, sommeliers, all over the place. And yet, if you went to that stupid movie, Psalm, the women got two minutes and the men got the rest of the movie. That one made me really upset, all right, because there were more women sommeliers than ever before. And there are women making wine and women making cheese and women doing all sorts of things. But because it was posed, women chefs, no, we're not second-class citizens, but the press always likes to write up the guys because they're a little more outrageous. Women tend not to be outrageous. We're not outrageous enough. We need to learn to be outrageous. <laughs> we do. We're too I, nice. I don't know. 